First story. I made a post about my bullies in school. Now they are not getting jobs and are begging me to take it down. Enjoy unemployment. So, I was bullied mercilessly in school by a group of three girls. This lasted for over a decade. They went out of their way to make my life miserable. And I even skipped days of school on a weekly basis because I was so afraid of them. It's been three years since then, and I recently saw that two of them got degrees. The other isn't important. We'll call the two Katie and Becky. I am trying to get over what they did, and I am in therapy and on a few different anxiety and depression medications. So, when I saw that they'd got degrees, I tried to look past them, but the degrees they got both angered me and worried me. Katie got an animal care degree, and Becky got a degree to be a mental health nurse. I thought it was just a joke, but I was wrong. I didn't know what I was doing at first, but once I started, I couldn't stop. I wrote a long status on Facebook about what I'd endured at their hands. Cliff notes. 1. My phone was thrown in the sink at school. 2. They'd kick at my ankles in sports classes. 3. They'd comment on my weight, glasses, crooked teeth, and home life. 4. They made a category at prom for most likely to end themselves, and I was the only candidate. It was coincidentally taken out before tutors could see. 5. They would hide my sports clothes and replace them with some that were too small. 6. They locked me in the gym cupboard until after lunch. I have no proof, but I knew it was them. 7. They'd follow me home and try to barge me into the roads. 8. They'd stab my arms with pens and pencils in class. These are just the few I mentioned in my post. There are a lot more, and some are a lot worse. I tagged them in the post, mentioned their names many times, and pinned it to the top of my page. A lot of people are telling me I'm being petty, and I know I am, but I don't care. There was an argument in the comments between us and so many other people on all sides, but it soon stopped. I didn't take the post down. Out of nowhere, Becky messaged me privately, apologizing for what she put me through and at the same time blaming it on youth and immaturity. She asked if I could take the post down and said that she'd grown as a person since then. Only three years after the prom category thing, I was contemplating taking the post down, but not even a day later I found out her true intention. In my country, a potential employer will look at someone on social media as a character reference, and an unknown person sent me an email asking if they could keep screenshots of my post and the comments on file. I agreed. As long as my post is up, neither of them is likely to get a job in their fields, and I'm glad about it. Relevant comments. Maritatu 57. YTA, because you are now bullying them. I am now 65. But from 6th grade through high school, and at work, I was viciously bullied. It had a profound impact on my life, on my emotions, and on my mental health. So often, I wanted to out them. I have family members who project themselves to be holier than thou, and I want to out them, too. The reason I don't is because doing so will reflect more on me than on them. Another reason is that people do change. The people who bullied you may not really remember what they did, but they have since become good people. I know that I've not always been perfect or kind, and I'd hate to be stoned in public for it. Of course, what these girls did was horrendous. I lived the consequences of what was done to me, suffering because of it. But I've chosen to learn from it and hopefully become a better person because of it. I suffered greatly, but now I recognize suffering in others. Learning that helped me get through 24 years of 24-7 parental caregiving. So, in my opinion, what you are doing now is a form of bully, and you are the one who can't learn and move on. Moving on doesn't mean forgetting. You haven't matured. OP. I haven't been allowed to mature. Good for you. At 65 years old, you have managed to build a life for yourself, but you have no right to dictate what is and is not a good person in this situation. In case you didn't notice, this is not a sub to ask whether I'm arsehole, because I know I'm not. I'm firm in my belief that I'm doing the world a favor. Imagine, during your decades of parental caregiving, that you found out their nurse had pushed someone in the middle of the road, hoping they were hit by oncoming traffic. Imagine you found out that they'd locked someone with claustrophobia in a small, dark cupboard for hours on end and did not return for them. Many of the offenses could have been charged criminally. But back then, I was so browbeaten that I showed mercy. I didn't want to ruin their lives, but now. No, they've gone into fields that directly go against everything I know of them. So why shouldn't I express my concern and my experience? Clearly, you have not gained wisdom with age, just a warped idea of self-righteousness. In response to a deleted comment, don't ever pretend to know them. Your coulds and maybes and anything is possible attitudes are why horrible people lead the lives they do without fear of consequences. Victims of assault and abuse, both publicly and domestically, should not warn those that their attackers come into contact with. Shame on you. Update. So, it's been a little while since I made my last post, and I received so much support. I'd like to thank everyone who was able to show sympathy for me, even those who challenged me respectfully. I'd first like to clarify some things. 
Yes, part of me wants to put them through the pain I went through and is enjoying the experience, but it was their chosen paths that made me make the post. Becky should not be responsible for someone else's mental health. I fear it for whomever she is charged with. Katie too. I have not been able to leave my house because of them, and my pets are my only solace. I would hate for them to be in her hands. I am not trying to make them jobless forever, just not with these jobs. The other girl is a hairdresser, and I have mentioned her to no one. I don't have them on social media, but a friend of mine shared Katie's post, so I saw it on my feed. That led me down a hole. I am aware that I still have a lot to fix within myself. I am not a perfect person, and I know the rage I feel needs to be overcome, but I am not there yet. People tell me to move on and forgive, but I am not ready to move on, and I don't want to forgive them. Forgiveness is always the victim's burden when the perpetrators deal with no consequences. They may want to forget me, but the scars I have are not going away. Maybe I will forget them someday, but not anytime soon. I would also like to apologize to whoever reads my comments. I got quite personal in some ways, and memories were suddenly fresh in my mind. I was replying from a place of hurt, and I apologize. However, to those saying that Becky could have been genuine in her apology, I'd like to point out that you do not know these girls. I knew them very well for over a decade of our lives, so I know when they are lying. They did so for me and our tutors well enough for me to learn. Now, to the update. I reached out to my old school for access to my school files and have been speaking with the new administrators of the school, and after some time they found my files. I was worried that they would not be named by name, but they were. Some of them had to be because they could have become police charges if my mother had opted. The later instances were less named because it was assumed who did it. I only want these files in case they refute my claims. I also did what many kind comments suggested and saved Becky's messages to me, admitting what she had done. I have been contacted again by a private facility asking to keep evidence, and Becky's father contacted me. I couldn't read his message because of the fear, but once I did, I felt a bit guilty. He said that Becky was panicking, and he had looked up the post. He did not know the extent of what happened and apologized to me for not stopping her. I knew he was true because he did not ask me to take it down and accepted it. He was a decent man, and I do not want him shamed by this in our community. I have relayed everything to my therapist, who was very excited but offered caution, as I thought he would. Everybody is different, and for once, I am feeling a bit better. He cautions against using this as a tool and not a crutch. But speaking publicly is a breakthrough. I have decided to keep the post up because I do not like the idea of them caring for vulnerable creatures. I have made it public and will keep their names visible in a Google search. I will also be sending prints to our local hospitals and shelters. If, in the future, I see that they have genuinely changed and they reach out with a genuine apology, I like to believe I'd be moved to take it down. That all depends on how far I come in therapy and how remorseful they come to be. These people, at least right now, cannot be trusted around those in the field and I am doing my best to help others by living my life. Some will say I'm being selfish, petty, harsh, and, as one comment said, a loser. But these people are not me and have not been through what I have. They will never understand the hurt I have endured and the fear I have for their charges. Those who are saying they could have changed do not realize the situation. You may think a leopard can change his spots, but he'll always be a leopard. He cannot be trusted around prey, like these people cannot be trusted around vulnerable people and animals. Thank you all for your support. Relevant comments. No appearance 1145. Sometimes I forget that I didn't forgive my father for using me. I have little plans here and there to make his life miserable in the future. Much like OP I feel like people confuse accepting what happened with forgiveness too much. OOP. This is what my therapist mentioned in my session. Very true. He explained it better than me but said that acceptance is a journey, but forgiveness is not controllable. In other words, you cannot make yourself forgive people. You only work on the journey of accepting that it happened. Second story. I truly and genuinely hate my own daughter. I was married to a very abusive man when I was very young. He held me prisoner in my own home and it used me on a daily basis. One day, he just got up and left with another woman. It was like something answered my prayers. It was the first time in 15 years that I saw the outside of my home. I had three children with him. My sons were old enough to remember the abuse, but my daughter was only a couple of years old. We tried to shield her as much as we could from the truth, but she knew that he was abusive. He contacted us 20 years later, when he was terminally ill and wanted to see his children. My sons refused, but my daughter went to see him. Her brothers were very distraught by it, but I told them to let her be. He passed away six months later. When my daughter was pregnant, she found out that it was a boy, and she told me that she was going to name him after her father. I fainted at the thought. I couldn't believe her. I begged her not to do it, but she just said that she was sorry, but she didn't have the same horrible picture of him that we had. 
and she insinuated that I'd lied about her dad he probably poisoned her mind. I didn't know what to do, and my sons said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore. But before that, without my knowledge, my sons met with her and her husband. They told them everything they remembered and everything they knew. All the use and imprisonment. Her answer was, I'm sorry, but I don't give a SHT. This is not my experience with him. I felt sick. The last time I saw her was when I tried to talk to her one last time. I was scared. I saw him looking back at me through her eyes, and I was that 18-year-old prisoner. I knew I hated her there and then. She has given birth now, and she texted me a picture of her and her son. I deleted it before even seeing it. She has called and texted multiple times. Now she's saying I have turned her brothers against her. I did no such thing, of course, but I am partially the reason why they don't speak to her. Why don't I feel more guilt or horror that I hate my own child? I never thought it'd be possible, and I've not admitted it to anyone because I'm disgusted with myself. Life sucks. Update. Hello again. A few weeks ago, I was here venting about something I thought I would be crucified for, but instead I was met with so much support and understanding. I never did. Thank you. This community is amazing. I wrote that I had decided to have no contact with my daughter. After she chose to call her son after my user. Anyway, my daughter felt ostracized by her brothers, and she spread talk about me influencing my sons to boycott her. After she gave birth, she started texting me pictures of her son with his name. I never answered her. I also changed my phone number, and my work number goes directly to an assistant before the calls, emails, and texts are forwarded to me. The only way she could contact me now is if she showed up at my place, and she did that with her mother-in-law, husband, and baby last Sunday morning. She gave me her son to hold, and then she and the rest sat around the kitchen table. She was looking at me the whole time when she accused me of being a bad mother and grandmother. I should get over myself because I wasn't the only woman in the world who experienced a bad marriage. I was spoiled. A loose woman. Selfish. She told me that she knew why I was doing this. I was doing this because I wanted to exclude her from the inheritance, but she will fight with all her power for herself and her sons. I didn't remember much of what happened next. I was feeling sick and felt like I was coming in and out of conciseness. I didn't only hate my daughter, I was terrified of her. All I could think of was that I didn't want to be in the closet again. The next thing I remember is my son-in-law walking after me in the street with a coat in hand and asking if I needed an ambulance. He told my sons that I kept telling him not to take me back to the closet. X locking me in the closet for days, sometimes weeks, when I disobeyed him. The next thing I remember was my son in the hospital. None of them live in my town and I was planning to find a new job and move closer to them before all this happened. Now, not only that, I don't have anything here to live for. I'm terrified. I don't know what inheritance my daughter was talking about either. I own so little. My car is old, and my house isn't of any significance. Anyway, I'm selling it, and I will give her her share. Make sure she can never again come after me about it. My sons are not happy about my decision, but I would give her anything if she left me alone and never bothered me again. I am happy to buy my freedom if it was the money she was after all along. My older son said that she was planning to take over the house once I retired. It's something she's talked about before, way before she even met her husband. When my son left home, she was thinking since she's the only one living in town, she could take the house and start her family. When I cut her off, she thought I was going to cut her off my will too. That's why she still kept trying to force a relationship with me. Now I can buy her out of my life. The rest I will put on a down payment for a small space in my new city. I work from home until I can be transferred or find a new job. If you made it this far, thank you for listening, and I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable. Final edit. Thank you all for the advice. It seems like the majority feel the same way as my sons. I will need to think more and talk to my therapist. I'm not in any hurry to take any action now. I realize that I'm in no position to think straight. I'm moving in with my eldest for the time being, and I'm trying to put myself together. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of story, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.